when you talk about and, and, and think about the usage of psychedelics, how have they affected your life? Oh, well, I mean, they've definitely affected my life uh, in terms of like, you know, they really are, uh, you know, not to, not to sound cheesy, but they are eye-openers, yeah. you know. They really do kind of expand your perception of reality and make you think about things in a much different light, I think, than, than uh, if you haven't. Hmm. Um, and so, you know, when we were teenagers, like the first few times we tried out mushrooms, they didn't really have any effect on me. And then the one time that they did was kind of like a real, ooh, this is super fun. A gagushka. Yeah. Yeah. This is super fun and pretty trippy and crazy. Uh, but it wasn't until I tried acid for the first time that I really kind of got that you know, that, that perception widening feeling okay. of, you know, being connected with the universe and how, you know, the earth is, is alive and just, you know, just really kind of feeling that, that extrasensory type stuff that's usually linked with, with LSD. Okay. All right. Um, you know, in, in regards to uh, the relation between psychedelics and spirituality. Hmm. Did you feel a connection there? Was it more so a connection to the, the physical universe around you? Or was there a, a, a higher feeling of understanding and perhaps something linked towards uh, something that you would think is maybe a spiritual awakening, perhaps? Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say a spiritual re- awakening. Okay. I, mean, I definitely felt more so like in the physical sense, like, you know, we're all, you know, we're all creatures on this planet and we all, you know, like it's it's a living, breathing singular unit kind of thing Mm. um and so i guess i felt you know kind of more in touch with that which you know could be ascribed to some kind of spirituality um but did i you know did i feel more in touch with like god or a god or the concept of Mm. god no no okay now do you find yourself to be a spiritual person in general no not really no okay um when you were raised uh did you ever have much influence from your family did you go to church or anything like that when it comes to basic organized religion was there an impact on your life at a young age so my um my mother and i were not really religious um the the family itself you know uh, aside from being irish was not really too religious which is you know strange for for an irish family um but no my mother and i weren't really religious at all uh it was not something that i was brought up with however uh, my best friend growing up, who was Jamaican, he okay. went every week to uh, a Jamaican Pentecostal church. Okay. Uh, his father had a big white Cadillac with red velvet interior that he'd only take out on Sundays. And awesome. So, as a kid, I just loved getting dressed up. Okay. I still love getting dressed up. You know, I was a kid on the first day of school who was in the full-on tie and, okay. and yeah. jacket and the whole whole nine yards. So I love getting dressed up, um, and I think they love taking you know, this little white boy with them to the Jamaican Pentecostal church. Okay. Um, so fond memories of that aspect of uh, of organized yeah, religion, perhaps. But yeah. in that being said, like we were, we would go to like the Sunday school portion, which was you know for kids and a little bit more laid back. When we, when I, you know, the few times that I saw the adult portion, you know, I don't know what your understanding is of Pentecostal church, but like that's where they're talking in tongues and like they go yeah, the whole on the fits. intensity. Yeah, it's very intense. Yeah, and um, I stopped going when they were telling when they started telling me that women wearing pants was a sin. Okay. And I was like, my mom wears pants. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold up. This is all bullshit. Now, on the opposite side of that, were there anything that, the you know, any experiences at youth or any ideas that were brought up to you that made you interested in perhaps wanting to get involved in organized religion or perhaps visiting the church on your own? No, never. I no, never okay. really had any sort of spiritual desire like that. Organized religion... I think for as long as I can remember, it was like not something that I was ever taught was like really a good thing. Okay. Um, and my experience, yeah, with the Pente- Pentecostal church as a kid, <clears throat> just kind of was like, no, this is kind of BS. All right, all right. And that's kind of where it stayed. Okay. All right. Now uh, let's go on to, uh, you know, fun stuff, right? Talk about some fun stuff. All right. All right. Death. Death. <laughs> all right. You think about it often? Yeah, I do think about it often. What comes to mind when you think about death? Do you ever consider, you know, the idea of there being an afterlife when we're on the subject of religion, mm-hmm. heaven and hell, for example? Has that ever crossed your mind? Yeah, it definitely has crossed my mind. Like, what if, you know, what if I'm wrong and there is a heaven and hell? Mm. Um, you know, I, 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 in terms of, like, my actual beliefs, 
I think like, you know, I call myself an agnostic. I don't really know if there's something out there. Mm. Um, I don't think there is, but I'm not totally saying, you know, I'm not like hardcore. Yep. Like, nope, there's nothing. We die and that's it. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure. I mean, I think that the brain is a fucking really crazy thing. And so, you know, all the, all the stuff like when you die, you know, DMT is released in your brain or something similar to that. Mm-hmm. And that's why people have these out-of-body experiences. Yeah. So they, they see their life flash before their eyes. I'm much, you know, and that could last in your brain. That could last an entire lifetime. We could yeah. be dead right now. That's a great point. Um, so uh, that I definitely believe in. I definitely think that like when you die, something happens either brain chemistry wise or or something yeah. and you know there'll be you'll you'll trip you'll still something will happen. Yeah. yeah and what you know what worries me about like the idea of hell is like perhaps this trip out is you know is is based on some sort of anxiety so like you know i've always thought like say killing yourself uh killing yourself is you know is a mortal sin in mm-hmm. many religions um and so, you know, what if when you kill yourself, the brain toxin that release just makes you feel, makes gets you caught up in some sort of idea of hell? Yeah. Um, where you're living with this guilt for however long it takes until your brain stem dies or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, fun. Fun, right? Yeah, fun, fun stuff. Yeah, fun stuff. All right. Uh, any, um, you know, when you think about reincarnation or, or the idea of, of, of the meaning of life and the idea of when this is all over going to some grand lobby <laughs> like heaven and figuring things out. I mean, when reincarnation is brought up to me, I, I like to think of the idea of when you're playing a game and right. you've chosen to play a game with a certain character and you beat the game. And then you go, well, you know, that's who I wanted to play as. That was fine. But I wouldn't mind trying as this. I wouldn't mind putting myself in this position. I wouldn't mind trying this with lower stats and da 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 And that idea of, you know, you choose this life to come back to you, right? Mm. Um, this is if you're entertaining the idea of, of reincarnation. And, and I, I like to entertain the idea of just about anything. Yeah. Um, but with something like that, you know, on that level or on a scientific level of these particles and atoms have been here before and mm. repurposed in your body again. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, like, I think one of the big things, you know, that I, that I believe in that, I guess is somewhat spiritual is that, you know, our bodies are powered by electricity Mm -hmm. and electric impulses. And when we die, that electricity has to go somewhere, Mm -hmm. whether it joins with the, you know, the earth's electromagnetic field or what have you. I mean, I'm no scientist, so I'm just talking purely out of my ass, but like, I'm, it has to go somewhere, right? Um, and so the idea of like a reincarnation or, you know, experiencing past lives, um, you know, I think that strong electrical impulses or surges or whatever you want to call them can leave imprints. Mm. Um, you know, there's also like the idea and concept of time being, you know, nonlinear. Mm-hmm. So, you know, myself living here in 2020 Toronto could also be simultaneously living in 1020 Belfast. Yeah. Um, and you could maybe like catch glimpses of something like that. Uh, so I'm not sure, but I think it's, it's, it's interesting to think about. Yeah. And it's not stuff that I would write off. Um, and I think, you know, and I think the idea of, of reincarnation from like a, a Buddhist outlook in terms of like if you lead a good life, you'll lead you know you'll you'll be reincarnated into a higher form um after you die it's a really kind of beautiful idea okay and i think it's much more enticing to kind of have something like that <clears throat> than like yeah than like as you said to be invited into like some grand lobby yeah for being a good person yeah gotcha now what about the idea of raising the dead what about the idea of the occult and magic and dark magic and such? Oh, I mean, that's just super cool, man. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, did you ever have an interest in that when you were young? Did you ever, you know, dabble? What's, uh, what's your take on it? Uh, I never really had too much of an interest in, like, magic or anything when I was younger. You know, it's, uh, you kind of think of it as just, like, parlor tricks mm. and, you know, silly pulling rabbits out of hats and silly things like that. Um, you know, having, having done LSD and having read some, you know, some authors who've also, you know, tripped and talk about magic and stuff and, you know, this idea that like our perception is malleable is, I find really fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that there is, 
some weight to be put behind like belief. Okay. And you know, I really I think I really think that if you could get an entire like 120,000 seat NFL stadium filled to capacity of people and you got them all to concentrate on bending a spoon in the middle of that stadium. Yeah. I fucking believe that that spoon will bend. Okay, I like that. I like and, that. Uh, whether it's not, whether it's because all 180,000 of those people just simply believe yeah. that it's bent to them, and it appears bent, yeah. or it just bends based on that mental force. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think something will happen. Something will happen. Eh? Yeah, I like that. All right, well, uh, let's move on to other oddities and such. You got any uh, anything like you know, being Irish and uh, from the Isles over there, over in Scotland, perhaps the idea of something like the Loch Ness monster, uh, the Bigfoot, aliens. Oh, oh, yeah. things like that. Definitely, definitely. There has to be aliens. Okay. There absolutely have to be aliens. Okay. Um, that's not. There's no doubt in my mind uh, whether there are or not. There okay. definitely are. Have you had any experiences? Uh, any any unexplainable experiences, whether there be even from your young youth, that stick out as a as a that was something going on. Mm, no, I mean I've had I've had some like real heavy duty deja vu. Okay. Which is probably the only thing I've been like, no, this, like, I've dreamt about this. Yeah. Or, like, I, I felt this happen before. Like, that shit I've had, like, that shit's for real. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of any sort of, like, yeah, unexplained stuff, no, I can't no. say that, no. All right. Now, let's uh, let's go over to a word that, uh, that I'm going to find another one to use for, conspiracies. Conspiracies. Okay. okay. Conspiracies and such. Um, you know, moving on to... What, uh, what's another word for these things? Okay, so, talking about conspiracies, perhaps. Yeah. Bringing up conspiracies now. Are there any that you entertain? Hmm. Are there any conspiracies? I mean, it's like this. The term conspiracy alone automatically puts you on this sort of, oh, yeah. I feel like, defensive sort of like, uh, oh, uh, you know. Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald was not, was not just some guy who killed fucking JFK himself. <laughs> Okay, all right. Whether you want to believe the Irishman, the movies take, that it was the mob who killed him. Yeah. Or, you know, it was the CIA who killed him, or Castro, or what have you. I do not believe that it was the it was just one dude. 